Harper Collins and Harper Audio present Warriors Super Edition Sky Clan's Destiny by Aaron Hunter, performed by McLeod Andrews. Prologue The sun was going down, casting deep shadows over the gorge. A chilly breeze ruffled the surface of the river and whirled the last few shriveled leaves through the air. The only sound was the murmur of water that surged from a black hole in a pile of boulders, coiling into a pool before winding away into the darkness beneath the cliffs. A dark tabby tom appeared at the top of the gorge, outlined against the sky. He paused for a moment, tasting the air. The dying sun shed blood red light over his pelt, touching a patch on his shoulder where the fur had been torn away. After a few heartbeats, the tabby tom signaled with his tail and began to pick his way down a narrow track that zigzagged across the face of the cliff. Seven other cats followed him. A white she-cat stumbled awkwardly on three paws. The fourth, a mass of blood-soaked fur held close to her chest. A long-legged black tom edged downward nervously, one eye closed and sticky with blood. A young ginger tom limped with both ears shredded. Not one of the cats was free of wounds. As the eight warriors padded painfully down the trail toward the water's edge, four more cats emerged from a cave a little farther along the gorge. The first was a young brown tabby tom, who sprang quickly down the rocks to the foot of the boulders. His paws worked anxiously in the sand as he waited for the warriors to arrive. The other three were elders, who stumbled after him on shaky legs. Well, Spider Star. One of them rasped as the leading cat reached the bottom of the cliff. The elder's muzzle was gray with age, and every one of his ribs was visible beneath his thin black pelt. What happened? Did you win? The dark tabby tom paused for a moment, then padded forward to touch his nose to the older cat's ear. What does it look like, Nightfur? He murmured in reply. Brackenheart, he added to the young brown tabby. I hope your den is well stocked with herbs. We're going to need them. Before the medicine cat could reply, the long-legged black tom pushed up beside his clan leader, his lip curling in contempt. Of course we didn't win. This battle was lost before it was even begun. A ginger tabby she-cat, who had brought up the rear as the battle-scarred cats made their way down the cliff, bounded up and glared at the black tom. You can't say that, Swallow Flight. We had to fight. Sky Clan still has its pride. It was the white she-cat who replied, shaking her head sadly. Pride in what, Honeyleaf? We can't feed ourselves because the rats have chased off all the prey. No kits have been born in moons. The only ceremonies we have now are to send our clanmates to our ancestors. The ginger she-cat's head whipped around, her green eyes narrowing to slits. Look, Frostclaw. Will we hold ceremonies for sun pelt and fallen snow? The young warrior with the shredded ears interrupted. His voice was trembling with grief. We will, Rowanfer. Spiderstar dipped his head to the young cat. Their spirits are free now to walk among the stars. What? A gray tabby elder rose shakily to his paws. Sun pelt and fallen snow are dead? Then where are their bodies? We must sit vigil for them and then bury them. Oak step, we had to leave them behind. Swallow Flight spat out with a lash of his tail. We were too busy fleeing to save our own pelts to carry our fallen clanmates. He turned away, his head bowed as if he couldn't bear to go on looking at the others. Frostclaw padded up and sat quietly beside him, pushing her nose into the black tom's matted shoulder fur. Swallow Flight, there was nothing else we could have done for them. No cat could blame us. She's right, Brackenheart meowed quietly. Our clanmates hunt with Star Clan now. They'll understand. Spider Star nodded, his eyes dark with pain and loss. But if you had brought them back, we could have buried them, Oakstep protested. Where is the honor in leaving them to be picked over by the rats? Sun pelt and fallen snow should never be crow food. Every paw step in effort, he started to hobble up the trail that led to the top of the gorge. Before he had gone more than a few fox lengths, Spider Star darted in front of him and forced the grief-stricken elder to stop. We have lost enough clanmates tonight, he mewed. Let us pray for their spirits as they join Star Clan. 
Swallowflat's ears pricked, and he turned to look at his clan leader. Star Clan, do you think they are really watching over us? His whiskers twitched with disgust. If they cared about us at all, they would never have let the rats come. Honeyleaf whirled to face her clanmate. Star Clan has given us the warrior code, and with that comes the courage and skill to defeat our enemies. Sky Clan is not defeated yet. Silence greeted her words. It was several heartbeats before Spider Star spoke, his voice aching with sadness. Honeyleaf, you're wrong. We are defeated. I cannot bear to lead my clanmates into one more battle, to watch them starve through another leaf bear, afraid of every noise, every stirring leaf. We have become prey, he heaved a sigh from the depths of his chest. The rats have won. Sky Clan is no more. A chorus of protest broke out at the clan leader's words. The third elder, a sandy-colored she-cat, hauled herself to her paws and padded up to face him, her whiskers twitching. That can't be right, Spider Star, she growled. I was a kit when we lived in the forest, when the two legs stole our territory and the other clans forced us to leave. Some cats thought Sky Clan was finished, but we found a new home for ourselves here in the gorge. If losing our home didn't beat us, neither should this battle. Mouse Fang's right, Oakstep patted to his clanmate's side. We can't give up now. Show us these rats, and we'll fight them, another elder, Nightfur, added. I never knew the forest, but I honor your memories of it. Spider Star dipped his head to the three old cats, respect in his eyes. No cat doubts your courage, my friends. But there's nothing that any of us can do. There are too many rats. Then there has to be another answer, Honeyleaf burst out. Spider Star, I've tried to be a good, brave, loyal deputy to you and to Sky Clan. I've worked my paws off, and I've never been afraid to fight. I didn't come this far just to watch our clan die. Spider Star reached out to touch the she cat's shoulder with the tip of his tail. You have been the best deputy a cat could wish for, he told her. And you would have led your clan with the same honor and courage. Every cat knows that. What do you mean? Would have. Honeyleaf drew her lips back in the beginning of a snarl. Her neck fur bristled up. I. This is all a load of mouse dung. Nightfur cut off what the deputy was about to say. How are we supposed to survive as loners if we can't survive as a clan? For a few heartbeats, no cat answered. They exchanged dismayed glances with one another, as if the old Black Tom's words had suddenly made them realize that they were facing a future without the support of their clan. Even Honeyleaf subsided, her fur settling flat again, and only her tail tip twitching. I, I've been taking food from two legs now and again, Frostclaw admitted, lowering her head and giving her mangled paw a lick. It doesn't taste too bad if you're hungry. What? Honeyleaf's ears pricked. Food from two legs? That's completely against the warrior code. Frostclaw blinked at her guiltily and didn't try to defend herself. The young ginger tom, Rowanfur, padded up to her and pressed himself against her side. So what? He meowed defiantly. I've been taking food from two legs, too. I'd rather do that than starve. I reckon they'd take us into their dens, he added his voice shaking a little. I think they're sorry for us, seeing how thin we are. If we went to live with them, we'd have shelter and we'd be safe from the rats. One or two of the other cats nodded and murmured agreement. Honeyleaf stalked into the middle of the group, raking them with an icy glare from her green eyes. Kitty pets? You want to be kitty pets? Sky Clan warriors will never do that. It would be the greatest shame of all. That's true. Swallowflight agreed with a lash of his tail. I'd rather die than go crawling to two legs for food. None of the other cats could meet the deputy's accusing stare. At last, Mousefang asked quietly, Brackenheart, have you had a sign from Star Clan? Can they tell us what to do? The young medicine cat padded forward, his eyes downcast. I feel nothing but sadness and guilt coming from our ancestors. He confessed, guilt for taking us away from the forest, 
and sadness because Sky Clan is coming to an end. What? Oakstep's eyes stretched wide with horror. Has even Star Clan given up on us? I remember when Cloud Star led us away from the forest, he went on when no cat answered him. He said we should never look to the spirits of our warrior ancestors again, and he was right. We should never have listened to Star Clan. They have done nothing for us. By now, the sunlight had almost gone, and warriors of Star Clan were beginning to appear in the darkening sky. But none of the cats in the gorge looked up at their frosty glitter. Instead, they huddled together at the bottom of the cliff, where the rocks retained a little warmth from the sun, and there was shelter from the chilly wind. Then this is the end, a black and white tom meowed. Rowan Fur, will you show me where to get two-leg food? Of course, the ginger tom replied. Any cats who want to can come with me and Frost Claw. A gray she-cat got up and padded to his side. I'll come too. There'll be food and warmth with the two legs. The warrior code can't feed or shelter us. It's just words. I never thought I'd hear a Sky Clan warrior say that, Honeyleaf hissed, horrified. The warrior code lives in all of us when we hunt and fight and give thanks for the life of a clan cat. The gray she-cat whipped around to face her. I do not give thanks for this life. It is over. Honeyleaf slid out her claws, and for a heartbeat it seemed as if the two she-cats would turn on each other, screeching and clawing. Then the clan deputy turned her back. Well, I won't turn into a mewling kitty pet, she insisted, her bristling fur showing how furious she was. If we can't stay here, I'm going farther up the gorge, away from the rats. There might be better hunting there. I'll come with you, Swallowflight meowed. We'll survive better if we hunt together. All three elders sat silent as the warriors discussed where they would go. At last, Mouse Fang raised her head to meet Spider Star's sorrowful gaze. I want to stay here, she stated flatly. I'm too old to find a new place. This is where I belong. Me too, murmured Nightfur, giving the old she-cat's ear a lick. The rats don't come here. There's water, and we can still find the odd mouse or beetle. It's not like we have much time left, Oakstep added. Once again, Spider Star dipped his head. I will stay with you, he meowed. I will see that each of you has an honorable ending, to give thanks for your loyalty. Nightfur nodded, his eyes full of grief and loss too deep for words. I'll stay too. Brackenheart added, this is where I can make the best use of my medicine cat skills before I am no longer a medicine cat. He rose to his paws, glancing around at the remnants of his clan, gathering their attention as a queen gathers her kits into the shelter of her tail. Then he looked up at the sky, staring unblinkingly at the cold light of his warrior ancestors. May star clan light your path, fallen snow, and yours, sun pelt. As you walk the skies to join them, he meowed. May you find good hunting, swift running, and shelter when you sleep. The cats around him murmured their agreement with the words spoken for each fallen warrior. Spider Star heaved a deep sigh. May Star Clan light a path for all of us. We still live on, but our clan has died. No cat responded. Their eyes shone in the starlight, full of fear and despair, as they stared at the cat who had been their clan leader. Spider Star did not meet their gaze, as if he was too overwhelmed by shame at the destruction of the clan he had led for so many seasons. Brackenheart remained silent for a heartbeat, then gave his pelt a swift shake, as if he had just pulled himself out of icy water. Come, he mewed. It's time I looked at your injuries. With a wave of his tail, the young brown tabby led his wounded clanmates to his den, where he stopped the worst of their bleeding with cobwebs and made poultices of marigold against infection. For Honeyleaf and the other cats who were leaving to explore farther up the gorge, he made up bundles of traveling herbs. May Star Clan walk with you, he meowed as they left. Honeyleaf bounded away without replying. Brackenheart followed her out of the den and sat beside Spider Star to watch his clan separate for the last time.
The moon had drifted from behind a patch of cloud, shedding a frosty light over the rocks and the river. The dark outlines of the departing cat slipped up the trail to the top of the gorge and were lost to sight. Only Spiderstar, Brackenheart, and the three elders were left. Let's move our nests into the elders' den, Brackenheart suggested quietly to Spiderstar. That way we can take care of them until they don't need us anymore. Spiderstar nodded, looking around the empty gorge. It was still littered with the lives of so many cats, with memories like shadows clinging to each rock and crevice. I wonder, he sighed. Will a clan ever live here again? I think they will. One day cats will return here and find a way to succeed where we have failed. A deeper echo sounded in Brackenheart's voice, a strength that came from pride and courage and unflinching loyalty to the warrior code. This is the leaf bear of our clan. Greenleaf will come, but it will bring even greater storms than these. Sky Clan will need deeper roots if it is to survive. Chapter One Floodwater thundered down the gorge, chasing a wall of uprooted trees and bushes as if they were the slenderest twigs. Leafstar stood at the entrance to her den and watched in horror as the current foamed and swirled among the rocks, mounting higher and higher. Rain lashed the surface from bulging black clouds overhead. Water gurgled into Echo Song's den. Though the Sky Clan leader strained her eyes through the stormy darkness, she couldn't see what had happened to the medicine cat. A cat's shriek cut through the tumult of the water, and Leaf Star spotted the clan's two elders struggling frantically as they were swept out of their den. The two old cats flailed on the surface for a heartbeat and then vanished. Cherry Tail and Patchfoot, heading down the trail with fresh kill in their jaws, halted in astonishment when they saw the flood. They spun around and fled up the cliff, but the water surged after them and carried them yowling along the gorge. Leafstar lost sight of them as a huge tree, its roots high in the air like claws, rolled between her and the drowning warriors. Great Star Clan, help us, Leafstar prayed. Save my clan. Already the flood water was lapping at the entrance to the nursery. A kit poked its nose out and vanished back inside with a frightened wail. Leafstar bunched her muscles, ready to leap across the rocks and help. But before she could move, a wave higher than the rest licked around her and caught her up, tossing her into the river alongside the splintered trees. Leafstar fought and writhed against the smothering water, gasping for breath. She coughed as something brittle jabbed inside her open mouth. She opened her eyes and spat out a frond of dried bracken. Her nest was scattered around her den and there were deep claw marks in the floor where she had struggled with the invisible wave. Flicking off a shred of moss that was clinging to one ear, she sat up, panting. Thanks, Star Clan. It was only a dream. The Sky Clan leader stayed where she was until her heartbeat slowed and she had stopped trembling. The flood had been so real, washing away her clanmates in front of her eyes. Sunlight was slanting through the entrance to her den. With a long sigh of relief, Leafstar tottered to her paws and padded onto the ledge outside. Down below, the river wound peacefully between the steep cliffs that enclosed the gorge. As sun high approached, light gleamed on the surface of the water and soaked into Leafstar's brown and cream fur. She relaxed her shoulders, enjoying the warmth and the sensation of the gentle breeze that ruffled her pelt. It was only a dream. She repeated to herself, pricking her ears at the twittering of birds in the trees at the top of the gorge. New Leaf is here, and Sky Clan has survived. A warm glow of satisfaction flooded through her as she recalled that only a few short moons ago she had been nothing more than Leaf. She had been a loner, responsible for no cat but herself. Then, Firestar had appeared, a leader of a clan from a distant forest, with an amazing story of a lost clan who had once lived here in the gorge. Firestar had gathered loners and kitty pets to revive Sky Clan. Most astonishing of all, Leaf had been chosen to lead them. I'll never forget the night when the spirits of my ancestors gave me nine lives and made me Leaf Star, she murmured. My whole world changed. I wonder if you still think about us, Firestar, she added. 
I hope you know that I've kept the promises I made to you and my clanmates. Shrill meows from below brought the she-cat back to the present. The clan was beginning to gather beside the rock pile, where the underground river flowed into the sunlight for the first time. Shrewtooth, Sparrowpelt, and Cherrytail were crouched down, eating, not far from the fresh kill pile. Shrewtooth gulped his mouse down quickly, casting suspicious glances at the two younger warriors. Leafstar remembered how a border patrol had caught the Black Tom spying on the clan two moons ago, terrified and half-starving. They had persuaded him to move into the warrior's den, but he was still finding it hard to fit into clan life. I'll have to do something to make him understand that he is among friends now, Leafstar decided. He's more nervous than a cornered mouse. The two clan elders, Lycanfer and Tangle, were sharing tongues on a flat rock warmed by the sun. They looked content. Tangle was a bad-tempered old rogue who stopped in the gorge now and again to eat before going back to his den in the forest. But he seemed to get on fine with Lycanfer, and Leafstar hoped she would convince him to stay permanently in the camp. Lycanfer had lived alone in the woods farther up the gorge, aware of the new clan, but staying clear of them. She had almost died when she had been caught in a fox trap, until a patrol had found her and brought her back to camp for healing. After that, she had been glad to give up the life of a loner. She has wisdom to teach the clan, Leafstar mewed softly from the ledge. Every clan needs its elders. The loud squeals she could hear were coming from Bounce Paw, Tiny Paw, and Rock Paw, who were chasing one another in a tight circle, their fur bristling with excitement. As Leafstar watched, their mother, Clovertail, padded up to them, her whiskers twitching anxiously. Leafstar couldn't hear what she said, but the apprentices skidded to a halt. Clovertail beckoned Tiny Paw with a flick of her tail and started to give her face a thorough wash. Leafstar purred with amusement as the young white she-cat wriggled under the swipes of her mother's rough tongue, while Clovertail's eyes shone with pride. Pebbles pattering down beside her startled Leafstar. Looking up, she saw Patchfoot heading down the rocky trail with a squirrel clamped firmly in his jaws. Wasp Whisker followed him with his apprentice, Mint Paw, a paw step behind. They both carried mice. Leafstar gave a little nod of approval as the hunting patrol passed her. Prey was becoming more plentiful with the warmer weather, and the fresh kill pile was swelling. She pictured Wasp Whisker when he had first joined the clan during the first snowfall of Leaf Bear. A lost kitty pet wailing with cold and hunger as he blundered along the gorge. Now the gray and white Tom was one of the most skillful hunters in the clan, with an apprentice of his own. He even had kits with another former stray named Fallow Fern. Sky Clan is growing. As their father padded past, Wasp Whiskers' four kits bounced out of the nursery and scampered behind him, squeaking. Their mother, Fallow Fern, emerged more slowly and edged her way down the trail after them. She still wasn't completely comfortable with the sheer cliff face and pointed rocks that surrounded Sky Clan's camp. Be careful, she called. Don't fall. The kits had already reached the bottom of the gorge, getting under their father's paws, cuffing one another over the head and rolling over perilously near to the pool. Wasp Whisker gently nudged the pale brown Tom nettle kit away from the edge. But as soon as their father turned away to drop his prey on the fresh kill pile, nettle kit's sister, Plum Kit, jumped on him. Nettlekit swiped at her, as if he was trying to copy a battle move he'd seen when the apprentices were training. Plumkit rolled over. Nettlekit staggered, lost his balance, and toppled into the river. Fallowfern let out a wail. Nettlekit! Stifling a gasp, Leafstar sprang to her paws, but she was too far away to do anything. Fallowfern leaped swiftly from boulder to boulder, but Wasp Whisker was faster still, plunging into the pool after his kit. Leafstar lost sight of them for a few heartbeats. She watched the other clan cats huddled at the water's edge, all except for Shrewtooth, who paced up and down the bank, his tail lashing in agitation. Leafstar purred with relief when she saw Wasp Whisker hauling himself out of the river with Nettle Kit clamped firmly in his jaws. The tiny Tom's paws flailed until his father set him down on the rock. Then he shook himself, spattering every cat with shining drops of water. Fallowfern pounced on him and started to lick his pelt, but Nettlekit struggled away from her and hurled himself straight at Plumkit. I'll teach you to push me in the river, he squealed. I did not push you, you fell in, so there, Plumkit yelled back. She crouched down and leaped forward to meet her littermate in midair. 
The two kits tussled together in a knot of fur while their parents, looking frustrated, tried to separate them. Leafstar glanced over her shoulder at the sound of Paul's steps approaching from farther down the gorge and saw Echo's song with a bundle of herbs in her mouth. The young medicine cat's soft fur shone in the sunlight, reminding Leafstar that not long ago she had been a kitty pet. But now she moved confidently over the stony ground, her pads hardened by her time in the gorge, and she had the lean, muscular strength of a clan cat. Echo Song looked up at her clan leader. Greetings, Leaf Star, she called, her voice blurred by the herbs. Greetings, Leaf Star meowed back to her. We'll start the warrior ceremony soon. Echo Song acknowledged her words with a wave of her tail and vanished into her den near the bottom of the cliff to add the herbs to her store. Are you ready? Leaf Star started as a voice spoke at her shoulder and spun around to see her deputy, Sharp Claw, standing behind her. She hadn't noticed his silent approach. Oh, it's you, she meowed. You frightened my fur off, creeping up on me like that. The dark ginger Tom narrowed his eyes in amusement. Nothing frightens your fur off, Leaf Star. With a glance at the sky, he added, It's sun high. When are you going to start the ceremony? I'm waiting for the others, Leaf Star explained. Sharp Claw's amusement vanished, and he flicked his tail. You should carry on without them, he meowed impatiently. Leafstar twitched one ear in surprise and saw a defensive look come into her deputy's eyes. We never know when they're going to turn up, he persisted. And there are three young cats down there ready to burst with excitement. Glancing at the rock pile again, Leafstar saw that he was right. Bounce Paw and Rock Paw were circling each other as if they were about to start battle training, while Tiny Paw bounced up and down on the spot, too anxious to sit still. Their shrill mews floated up to Leafstar. Very well, Leafstar dipped her head. We'll start now. With one more glance at the top of the gorge, she led the way down the trail to the rock pile. As she and Sharpclaw approached, their clanmates parted to let them through. Leafstar bunched her muscles and sprang to the top of the rocks, while Sharpclaw took his place at the base, not far from the fresh kill pile. From the rock pile, Leafstar looked down at her deputy's broad shoulders and felt a stab of gratitude for his courage and loyalty. He's a good deputy. Firestar advised me well. Leafstar raised her head and let her yowl echo throughout the gorge. Let all cats old enough to catch their own prey join here beneath the rock pile for a clan meeting. Sagepaw shot out of the apprentice's den and raced down the trail to join his littermate, Mintpaw, at the foot of the rock pile. They settled down, tails twitching, not far from Sharp Claw and Wasp Whisker. Sagepaw's mentor, Petalnose, emerged from the warrior's den and patted down to sit beside her apprentice. Patchfoot sat beside Clovertail, who was heavy with his kits. The she-cat leaned over and touched his ear with her nose, but her attention stayed fixed on the three apprentices. Leafstar suppressed a sigh when she saw how Shrewtooth edged away as the other warriors approached. He peered around nervously as if he thought the gorge was full of enemies, and then skittered down to the very edge of the stream where he sat, darting anxious glances around him. He's lived in the warrior's den for three moons, Leafstar thought, her claws kneading the rock in exasperation. Doesn't he know by now that no cat will bite his tail off? She wondered, not for the first time, what had happened in Shrewtooth's past to make him so troubled. But she didn't have time to worry about him right then. The Black Tom would confide in her when he was ready. And meanwhile, she had a warrior ceremony to conduct. Glancing around, Leafstar saw that almost all the clan had assembled. She wondered briefly what was keeping Echo song, but in the same heartbeat, the young medicine cat appeared from her den, the sweet scent of herbs drifting up from her pelt. She sat down beside Petal Nose and looked expectantly up at the rock pile. Cats of Sky Clan, Leafstar began. Today we gather for one of the most important ceremonies in the life of a clan, the naming of new warriors. Bounce Paw, Tiny Paw, Rock paw, she added with a wave of her tail. Come and stand here beneath the rock pile. The three young cats rose to their paws and padded forward, eyes sparkling and whiskers twitching with anticipation. Clovertail gave Rock paw a final lick as he passed her, though a tuft of black fur still stood straight up on his head, while one of Bounce Paw's ears was folded back on itself. His littermate Tiny Paw gave it a quick flick with her tail to turn it right side out. 
Their three mentors also rose and stood together a couple of tail lengths away. Leaf Star looked down at them, the solemnity of the moment surging over her like a wave. She knew that even if she led her clan for season after season, she would never fail to feel the wonder of presenting new cats to Star Clan. Besides, these three cats were special, the first warriors of Sky Clan who had been born in the gorge. Patchfoot, Leafstar began. Has your apprentice, Bounce Paul, learned the skills of a warrior? Has he studied the warrior code and understood what it means to every cat? The black and white Tom glanced proudly at his apprentice as he replied, Yes, Leaf Star. And so has Rockpaw, Cherrytail added. Leaf Star dipped her head in acknowledgement. She wished Cherrytail had waited to be questioned in her turn, but Rockpaw's mentor looked almost as excited as her apprentice, and there was no point in scolding her. Sparrowpelt, Leaf Star went on. Are you satisfied that your apprentice, Tiny Paw, has learned the skills of a warrior and the importance of the warrior code? Yes, Leaf Star, Sparrowpelt replied. She is ready to become a warrior. With a purr of satisfaction, Leaf Star leaped down from the rock pile and stood in front of the three young cats. Their eyes stretched even wider as their leader raised her head and addressed Star Clan. I, Leaf Star, leader of Sky Clan, call upon my warrior ancestors to look down on these three apprentices. They have trained hard to understand the ways of your noble code, and I commend them to you as warriors in their turn. A shiver went through Leaf Star as she remembered the ranks of starry cats who had stood around her when she received her nine lives and her name. Are they watching me now? Will they protect these young warriors until it's their turn to walk among the stars? Bounce Paw, Tiny Paw, Rock Paw, Leaf Star went on. Do you promise to uphold the warrior code and protect and defend this clan, even at the cost of your lives? Bounce Paw gave a huge gulp and replied, I do. I do, Rockpaw's voice rang out clearly. Tinypaw blinked, her eyes were deep blue pools as she too replied, I do. Then by the powers of Star Clan, I give you your warrior names. Bounce Paw, from this moment you will be known as Bounce Fire. Star Clan honors your energy and your loyalty, and we welcome you as a full member of Sky Clan. Leaf Star rested her muzzle on the top of Bounce Fire's head and the young ginger Tom licked her shoulder. Then he took a couple of paces back to stand with the other warriors. Rock Paw, Leaf Star went on. From this moment, you will be known as Rock Shade. Star Clan honors your courage and your strength, and we welcome you as a full member of Sky Clan. The black Tom closed his eyes briefly as Leaf Star rested her muzzle on his head, then licked her shoulder and withdrew to stand beside his brother. Tiny Paul was left alone in front of her clan leader. Leaf Star could see that the little white she cat was quivering with anticipation. Tiny Paw, she meowed. From this moment, you will be known as Tiny Cloud. Star Clan honors your intelligence and enthusiasm, and we welcome you as a full member of Sky Clan. She rested her muzzle on Tiny Cloud's head and felt the rasp of her tongue before she moved away to join her littermates. Bounce fire, rock shade, tiny cloud. The whole clan raised their voices to welcome the three new warriors. Leaf Star looked on proudly as her clanmates crowded around to offer congratulations. Tiny cloud, the white she-cat's voice rose indignantly above the rest. I'm not tiny anymore. I thought I'd be big enough to have a different name. A murmur of amusement ran through the cats around her. Clovertail padded up to her and gave her a comforting lick on her ear. You'll always be tiny to me, she purred. Leaf Star could see that the small white cat still wasn't convinced. Bouncefire and Rockshade both looked thrilled with their new names, but there was a shadow of hurt in their sister's eyes. The clan leader slipped through the crowd of cats until she stood in front of Tiny Cloud. Your name may be tiny, but your spirit is not, she murmured. One day, the name of Tiny Cloud will be honored by your clanmates and all the clanmates to come. Tiny Cloud stared at her. Do you really think so? Leaf Star nodded. It's up to you to do great things that will be remembered forever. Your name has nothing to do with what you choose to do. I'll do my best to be a great warrior, she promised earnestly. Leaf Star touched Tiny Cloud's shoulder with the tip of her muzzle. I know you will. 
While she was still speaking, Wasp Whiskers' four kits bundled past and crowded around their mother, Fallow Fern. We want to be apprentices, Nettle Kit announced. Fallow Fern stroked him gently with her tail. One day you will be, she promised, but not yet. You're too young. No, we're not, Nettle Kit's sister, Plum Kit, pushed forward to face her mother. We're three whole moons old. But to be an apprentice, you have to be six moons, her mother reminded her. Plum Kit's eyes clouded with dismay. But that's forever, her brother Rabbit Kit wailed. We don't want to wait that long. That's right, the fourth Kit, Creek Kit, added. We want to learn how to be warriors now. Fallow Fern gazed at Leaf Star over the heads of her kits. Her eyes were half amused, half helpless. What do I do with them? She asked. Leaf Star twitched her whiskers. They'll be apprenticed soon enough, she mewed. Then their mentors will have to deal with them. Fallow Fern heaved a long sigh. I can't wait. But Leaf Star saw that her gaze was full of affection as she watched the wriggling kits. Nettle Kit popped his head up. Plum Kit pushed me in the river, he complained. I was all wet for the ceremony. Did not, Plum Kit protested. You were showing off and you fell in. That's enough, Fallow Fern mewed sharply. Nettle Kit, Plum Kit, I don't want to hear another squeak from either of you. Plum Kit glared at her brother. Clovertail, he says I pushed him, she wailed, patting up to the light brown she-cat. And I didn't, he was just showing off. He should know he can't do that fighting move yet. I know, Clovertail bent her head to lick the dark gray kit's ear. Accidents happen, and there was no harm done. Nettle Kit is fine. Leaf Star was impressed by Clovertail's soothing words. She remembered what the she-cat had been like when she first joined Sky Clan. Lazy, spoiled, and selfish, and interested in clan life only for the protection it offered herself and her kids. But since then, she had become like a mother to all the cats, always ready with comfort and advice. She would never be a great hunter or fighter, but she kept the nursery clean and well-ordered. And I don't know how Fallow Fern would manage without her, looking after that rowdy lot. Come on, Clovertail urged, gathering the four kids together with her tail. Let's go back to the nursery, and I'll tell you all about the time Firestar came to the gorge. Yes, Creek Kid exclaimed, his eyes gleaming. That's the best story. As Clovertail and the kids headed up the trail, Leafstar gazed proudly at her clan. Sharp Claw was sitting in a patch of sunlight, grooming his dark ginger fur with long, smooth strokes of his tongue. The three new warriors were bunched together in an excited huddle, while their former mentors chose prey from the fresh kill pile and settled down to eat it. Petal Nose waved her tail at Wasp Whisker. Come on, let's give our apprentices some battle practice. Great, Sage Paw yowled and raced off up the gorge. His sister, Mint Paw, took off after him in a whirl of dust, followed more slowly by the two mentors. Leaf Star let out a sigh of pride and satisfaction. Her clan had survived the Longleaf Bear, and the battle with the rats was fading from memory. But we'll never forget Rainfur. The Gray Tom, Sage Paw, and Mint Paw's father, had fought valiantly on behalf of the clan he had belonged to for such a short time. He would always be remembered as the first warrior to give his life for the newly restored Sky Clan. And now, Sky Clan is strong in the gorge, thanks to Firestar and Sandstorm. Leaf Star's thoughts drifted back through countless seasons to the clan who had lived there before and left their claw marks in the warrior's den. She wished so often that she could know more about them. The last remnant of that long ago clan was Sky Watcher, the old gray tom who had been nicknamed Mooney, ridiculed and called mad by the cats who were now Leaf Star's loyal warriors. He had nurtured the memory of Sky Clan like a tiny flame, until Fire Star came to fan it into brilliant, blazing life. Leaf Star raised her head to gaze at the Sky Rock, where the clan gathered at the full moon. There are so many of us now that some cats have to sit on the main part of the cliff. She caught her breath as she made out a faint gray shape against the drifting white clouds. Skywatcher, 
Warmth filled the clan leader as she realized that the old cat had come back to see the ceremony for the first warriors who were born in the gorge. She raised her tail in greeting, hoping that all the Sky Clan ancestors were looking down from Star Clan and were proud of their descendants and those who had decided to become clan cats. We will honor you always, she murmured, her gaze still fixed on Sky Watcher's faint outline. And we will do everything we can to keep your clan alive. Chapter Two Invasion! Invasion! Leafstar spun around at the panic-stricken Yowl, her claws sliding out as she prepared to defend herself and her clan. Sharp Claw and the warriors around the fresh kill pile sprang to their paws, their fur bristling. A few tail lengths farther down the river, Shrewtooth stood stiff-legged on a rock, his eyes wide with horror as he gazed upward. His mouth hung open from where he had just screeched a warning. Now he looked too frightened to say anything. Three cats had appeared over the lip of the gorge and were trotting down the trail. The leader was a black she-cat, closely followed by a ginger and white tom, and a younger tom with a black and white pelt. That's Ebony Claw, Billy Storm, and Snookpaw, Cherry Tail meowed. Why is that mouse-brained tom making such a fuss? He nearly made me jump out of my fur, Sparrow Pelt grumbled. Leaf Star relaxed with a sigh. Shrewtooth, it's okay. It's just the daylight warriors. The jumpy black Tom stared at her, then flicked his gaze back toward the cats who were rapidly making their way down the rocks. At last, he seemed to recognize the newcomers. Sorry, he muttered, ducking his head to Leaf Star. The sun was in my eyes. I got confused. He's permanently confused, if you ask me, Cherry Tail muttered. Sharp Claw let out a hiss of annoyance and went back to grooming his pelt. He seemed to be ignoring the approaching cats, though Leaf Star spotted the tip of his tail twitching back and forth. She opened her jaws to speak and then thought better of it. Instead, she padded over to the bottom of the cliff to welcome the newcomers as they leaped down the last couple of tail lengths. Hi, Leaf Star, the black she cat meowed. Are we in time for the ceremony? Leaf Star shook her head. I'm sorry, Ebony Claw. We held it at sun high. Oh, no. The young Tom's voice rose in a wail. We missed it. I've been looking forward to it for nearly a moon. We called for Harvey Moon and Frecklepaw, Ebony Claw explained. But they were shut in, she shrugged. I guess we waited too long. Leaf Star didn't turn to look, but she could feel Sharp Claw's gaze boring into her back like a fox's fangs. She knew he didn't approve of allowing kitty pets to join the clan and go back to their two leg nests at night. But she wasn't about to start that argument again. Sky Clan needed the Daylight Warriors. They help us keep the fresh kill pile well stocked, and the clan is still small. We can't afford to turn any cat away. Never mind, Snookpaw, Ebony Claw went on. There'll be other ceremonies. But I wanted to see this one. Snookpaw padded over to the three new warriors. His eyes shone with admiration as he spoke to Bouncefire. I wanted to be the first to call you by your warrior name, and now I don't even know what it is. It's Bouncefire, the young warrior told him, seeming to swell with pride. That's a great name. And we're Tiny Cloud and Rockshade, Tiny Cloud added. Leafstar stifled a row of amusement when Snookpaw completely ignored the young white warrior. I bet you're the best warrior in the clan, he went on to bounce fire. I wish you could be my mentor. Hey, the ginger and white Tom strolled over to the younger cats and gave Snookpaw's shoulder a friendly shove. What's wrong with the mentor you've got? Sorry, Billy Storm, Snookpaw gave his chest for a couple of embarrassed licks. You're a great mentor too. Before Billy Storm could reply, excited squeals broke out from farther up the cliff as Nettle Kit, Plum Kit, Creek Kit, and Rabbit Kit scrambled out of the nursery and headed down the trail, slipping and tumbling over their own paws in their haste. Star Clan must be looking after those kits, Ebony Claw commented, or they would have broken their necks long ago. Billy Storm, Rabbit Kit mewed as he plopped down from the top of the last rock and scrambled over to the ginger and white tom. Watch us do the moves you taught us yesterday. I'm the best fighter, Nettle Kit boasted. No, I am, Plum Kit gave her brother a shove. They're too young to be taught fighting moves, 
Fallow fern meowed, her neck fur beginning to bristle. Nettle Kit nearly drowned today when they were play fighting. That's right, Patchfoot padded over to stand beside the pale brown she-cat. You shouldn't encourage them, Billy Storm. Half the time you're not even here. You don't see the trouble that they get into. Billy Storm dipped his head politely to the kit's mother. I'm sorry if there was an accident, Fallow Fern. But hawks and foxes won't stay away from them just because they're young. They may as well know some defensive moves. What would you know about hawks and foxes, kitty pet? Cherry Tail hissed from the other side of the fresh kill pile. Leafstar wasn't sure if Billy Storm had heard. He gave no sign of it, but she thought it was time to step in. The Fall Clan cats and the Daylight Warriors have to get on together. A divided clan cannot survive. We can't blame Billy Storm for Nettle Kit's accident, she meowed, patting up to stand beside the group of cats. Kits play all the time, and they don't watch where they're putting their paws. If they're not play fighting, they're pretending to stalk like foxes or fly like owls. I hope you'll all be more careful from now on, she finished, gazing down at Nettle Kit and his littermates. Nettle Kit nodded vigorously, his eyes stretched wide at being addressed by his clan leader. And can Billy Storm keep teaching us? Plum Kit begged. If he wants to, Leafstar agreed. And provided your mother says yes. All four kits hurled themselves at Fallow Fern, who staggered under the impact. Please, we'll stay away from the river, we promise. Well, Fallow Fern still looked reluctant. I suppose so. Squeaks of delight came from the kits. They immediately started wrestling, pummeling one another with soft paws. Billy Storm, look at me. No, watch me. I'm going to bite Rabbit Kit's throat out. That's enough for now, Leafstar mewed. Spotting Sharpclaw padding up to her, she added, it's time to set the patrols. Sharpclaw gave her a curt nod. I'll lead a patrol to check the borders on this side of the gorge. Cherrytail and Patchfoot, you can come with me. Sparrow Pelt, you can lead a border patrol on the other side. Take Bounce Fire and, yes, Ebony Claw, since your apprentice isn't here today, you might as well go with them. Leafstar's whiskers twitched. There was a definite edge to her deputy's words when he spoke to the Daylight Warrior, as if he didn't think she was much use to the clan. He might think that, Leafstar thought, but that's just his opinion. He doesn't have to be so obvious about it. Ebony Claw had understood the barb in Sharp Claw's comment, Leafstar could see, but she just dipped her head politely to the deputy and went to stand beside Sparrow Pelt and Bounce Fire. What about me and Tiny Cloud? Rockshade asked, his eyes shining. We want to do our first patrol as warriors. I haven't forgotten you, Sharp Claw meowed, sounding much more friendly as he addressed the gorge born cats. We need more fresh kill. Try the woods farther down river. Shrewtooth. You can go with him. The black tom gave a nervous jump. Right, Sharp Claw. And Billy Storm? I'd like Billy Storm and Snookpaw to join the other mentors and apprentices at battle training, Leafstar interrupted. Sharp Claw nodded. Fine, then that's every cat. Let's go. Just a moment, Echo Song padded up with a courteous flick of her tail to Sharp Claw. I need a cat to help me collect herbs. May I have Tiny Cloud? But that's an apprentice task, Tiny Cloud objected, her neck fur fluffing up in dismay. I'm a warrior now. And warriors do what they're told, Sharp Claw growled. But it needs doing, Tiny Cloud, Echo Song interrupted gently. And what if a fox or a badger attacks me while I'm out of the gorge? I'll need a warrior to protect me. Oh. Tiny Cloud's eyes brightened and her neck fur lay flat again. Then I'll be glad to come, Echo Song. I'll make sure you're safe. Leafstar watched the various patrols dispersing. It must be just like this in the forest where Firestar lives. We're a real clan, just like them. Sharpclaw, she murmured before her deputy could leave. Just a quick word. Sharpclaw cast a glance to where the other members of his border patrol were waiting a little farther up the gorge. His tail tip twitched, but he waited for his clan leader to continue. Was it necessary to sneer at Ebony Claw like that? Leafstar asked. I didn't, Sharp Claw began to protest, his eyes sparking with anger, then broke off with a sigh. All right, I was a bit sharp and I'm sorry, but these kitty warriors ruffle my fur. 
Leafstar flattened her ears and felt her neck fur start to bristle. Kitty, warrior's sharp claw, don't you think that's a bit insulting? Sharp claw met her gaze steadily. I'm just trying to be accurate. What would you call them? They don't live here in the gorge. They turn up when they feel like it. How can they follow the warrior code when they go home to their two legs every night? We've been through this already, Sharp Claw, Leafstar sighed. Too many times. You know my thinking on this. We're a small clan, and if we give these cats the chance to experience the way that warriors live, they might decide to join us permanently. It can't be too soon for me, Sharp Claw snorted. Even their names are half kitty pet. Snooky Paw, please. Snook Paw, Leafstar corrected him. He doesn't think that Snooky sounds like a warrior. And Snook does, I suppose. Leafstar gave him a half-exasperated, half-amused nudge. If their names are all you've got to complain about, they're doing well. Go on, your patrol is waiting for you. And just be a bit kinder to Ebony Claw next time. She's one of the keenest cats we have. She's a kitty pet. Sharp Claw twitched his whiskers. She wears a collar for Star Clan's sake. And look at the way she's tucked moss around it. Leafstar countered. She's doing everything she can not to scare off prey. So don't discourage her, okay? All right, Leafstar. Sharpclaw blinked at her, the anger gone from his green eyes. I might think your brain is full of bees, but I'll do as you say. Turning, he padded away and joined his patrol. Leafstar saw that Fallow Fern was herding her kits back up the trail to the nursery, ignoring their protests. You can play with Billy Storm later. Right now it's time for your naps. I'll still be here, kids, Billy Storm called after them. Leafstar waved her tail to beckon him and Snookpaw and led the way up the gorge, following in the paw steps of Sharp Claw's patrol. By now the sun had disappeared behind swelling black clouds and a chill breeze stirred up the dust. Rain before sunset, Leafstar thought. A few tail lengths farther on, the cliff curved inward leaving a wide, sandy space between the rocks and the river. Petalnose and Wasp Whisker were seated at one side of it, watching their apprentices. Mintpaw was crouched in the middle of the sandy area, her tail lashing as if she was about to pounce on a piece of prey. Sagepaw stalked forward, then suddenly ran at her, flashing out his claws to rake her along one side. But Mintpaw was too fast. She rolled toward him, ducked under his outstretched paw, and hooked his hind legs out from under him. Springing to her paws, she left her littermate scrabbling helplessly in the sand. Well done, Leafstar called. Mintpaw gave a little bounce of excitement when she realized that her clan leader had seen her successful move. Yes, very well done, Wasp Whisker meowed. But next time, follow it up. While he's floundering about in the sand, you could get in a couple of good blows. And next time, Sagepaw, Petalnose added. Try fainting to one side before you attack on the other. That way you get your opponent confused. I want to try that, Snookpaw mewed eagerly as he and Billy Storm reached the edge of the training area. Can I? Sure, Billy Storm replied. Let's watch Sagepaw and Mintpaw do it a couple more times first. Yes, Sagepaw sat up, spitting out sand. I'm going to get you next time, Mintpaw. Yeah, and hedgehogs will fly, his sister retorted. Leafstar settled down beside the mentors, her tail wrapped over her paws, and watched the training session. Very soon, all three young cats had mastered the new move. They still had a lot of training to do before they would be ready for their warrior names, but they seemed to grow stronger and faster every day. I want to practice what you showed us yesterday, Snookpaw meowed, scratching furiously to get sand out of his ear. Where we leaped up on the rocks, that's such a great move. Leafstar pricked her ears with interest. She hadn't seen that move yet. Show me, she invited. Snookpaw and Sagepaw faced each other, each one maneuvering to get closer to the rock wall. Suddenly, Sagepaw leaped up the cliff, twisting his body, clung there for a heartbeat, and launched himself down on top of Snookpaw, who failed to back off quickly enough. Snookpaw let out an indignant yowl as he battered at his opponent with all four paws, trying to thrust him off. Again, he insisted, struggling to his paws. Okay, if you want more sand in your pelt, Sagepaw agreed. The two young cats squared off again. This time, Snookpaw was first to leap up the cliff, 
But when he hurled himself down again, he was a heartbeat too slow and landed hard on the ground. Missed, Sagepaw squealed. Undaunted, Snookpaw spun around and scratched hard at the sand with his hind paws, sending a shower of it over Sagepaw. Now who has sand in their pelt? He taunted. Hey, the gray apprentice protested. Snookpaw, that's enough, Billy Storm warned. But it's part of the move, Snookpaw explained, trotting over to his mentor. If I could get sand in my enemy's eyes, they couldn't see to claw me. He has a point, Leafstar purred. It's a good move for fighting here in the gorge. True, Billy Storm admitted. But don't overdo it when you're training, okay, Snookpaw? We don't want Echo Song spending all day getting sand out of Apprentice's eyes. Okay, Snookpaw gave his mentor a cheerful nod. Leafstar was impressed by the young cat's enthusiasm. Here in the gorge, there wouldn't be the kind of battles with other cats that Firestar and his clan had to face from their rivals, but there could still be clashes with rogues and loners, or overly curious kitty pets from the two-leg place. Not to mention that the rats might come back, and there are foxes and badgers in the woods. Leafstar was determined that all her cats would be able to defend themselves and their clan. I want to try it now, meant Paw meowed, bounding up to stand by Snookpaw. I- she broke off with a startled squeal as a snowflake landed right on top of her head. Looking up, Leafstar saw that the black clouds had covered the sky, and more flakes of snow were drifting down onto the sand. Snow, Patchfoot exclaimed, wrinkling his nose in disgust. It's supposed to be New Leaf. I think that's enough training, Leafstar decided as the snow began to settle on her fur and whiskers. Let's get back to the camp before we're all soaked. Even though the camp was only a few fox lengths down the gorge, the snow grew thicker, a white screen that hid even the cliff on the opposite side of the river. The track beneath their paws was churned into mud. Before the dens came into view, every cat's pelt was plastered to their body by the melting flakes. Reaching the camp, Leafstar peered through the snow and managed to make out Shrewtooth and Rockshade racing back up the gorge with a couple of scraps of sodden prey in their jaws. Sparrow Pelt's border patrol was only a few fox lengths behind. Back to your dens, Leafstar gasped. Billy Storm, Ebony Claw, go with them. You'll have to stay until this is over. Come on, meant Paul meowed to Snookpaw. You can shelter in our den. Rockshade veered toward the cliff with the other warriors behind him, clawing their way up a trail that was suddenly treacherous and slick with melting ice. Leafstar spotted Echo Song and Tiny Cloud hurrying into the medicine cat's den, and Fallow Fern carrying a wriggling kit back into the nursery by its scruff. More cats appeared from the top of the gorge. Sharp Claw and his patrol were returning to camp. Leaping rapidly down the trail, the clan deputy reached Leafstar and the other cats on the ledge outside the warrior's den. Snow! the deputy exclaimed, shaking white flakes from his head with a disgusted snort before padding inside the den as if we didn't get enough of it in Leaf Bear. So let's not stand around complaining, Leaf Star meowed, following him inside. Come on, all of you, and a shelter. It'll be a good chance to do some cleaning out, Sharp Claw meowed, as the other warriors crowded into the den after their leader. It's starting to stink as if a fox died in here. Yuck, Cherry Tail exclaimed, slapping her tail over her nose. Good idea. Leafstar agreed, though all she could pick up was the overwhelming scent of wet fur from the cats milling around. We can pull out the old moss and rub snow on the walls to clean them. And I'd like to investigate those caves farther up the gorge, Sharpclaw suggested. We've been meaning to do it for nearly a moon. They could be useful for storing food or extra sleeping dens. You mean go out there again? Shrewtooth asked, his eyes wide and nervous. In this snow? What if we fall off the cliff? What if we freeze to death? What? What if a giant hedgehog spears you on his prickles? Cherrytail asked, giving the black Tom a shove that was only half impatient. I never knew a cat could worry so much. Well, I think cleaning up is a good idea, Petalnose spoke up. I'll go over and help in the nursery if it's okay with you, Leafstar. Good idea. Thanks, Petalnose. The gray she-cat slipped out into the snow, which was already starting to ease off. Leafstar stuck her head out to watch her go, then turned back to speak to her warriors. Sharpclaw, if you can supervise the cleanup here, I'll take some cats and check out the unused caves. And I'd be grateful if some cat could clean my den out while I'm gone. I'll do that, Sparrowpelt offered. 
It'll be so clean you won't recognize it. Leafstar gave the warrior a nod of gratitude. Okay, Rockshade and Bounce Fire can come with me. And you, Billy Storm. We'll pick up the apprentices from their den on the way. Er, Leafstar, Billy Storm gave his chest for a couple of embarrassed licks. I really think I should be going. I'm worried about getting snowed in. My housefolk won't know what's happened to me, and- I don't think you're bothered about your housefolk at all, Sparrowpelt interrupted indignantly. You just don't want to do the cleaning up. That's not true, Billy Storm sounded equally outraged. His neck fur started to bristle. So stay, Rockshade took a pace forward to stand beside Sparrowpelt. The snow is easing off already. It might start again, Billy Storm argued. I don't want to get stuck here. Remember when there was that really strong wind last leaf bear and all the kitty pets stayed overnight until it was over? My housefolk were really scared. I'm sure they thought it was never coming back at all. Sparrowpelt slid his claws out and opened his jaws to reply, but Leafstar silenced him by lifting her tail. Okay, she meowed to Billy Storm. If you need to go, then go. We'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks, Leafstar. The ginger and white tom sounded relieved. His embarrassed gaze swept around the remainder of the cats, then he turned and slipped out of the den. Do you need to go too, Ebony Claw? Leafstar asked. The black she-cat started. Oh, no, Leafstar. I'll stay. I'll help with the cleanup. Well done, some cat murmured from the back of the crowd. I don't think we should let Billy storm back tomorrow, Sparrowpelt announced, his eyes still sparkling with indignation. Right, Rockshade agreed. He only wants to be involved in the fun stuff. When there's work to do, he goes back to his housefolk. Leafstar suppressed a sigh. She knew she needed to head off quarrels between the full clan cats and the daylight warriors. She wanted every cat to be accepted as equal, but Billy Storm wasn't helping. Before she could intervene, Sharpclaw stepped forward and faced the two warriors. What happens to Billy Storm is Leafstar's decision, not yours. Now let's get on with what we have to do. Sparrowpelt and Rockshade exchanged a glance. Right, Sharpclaw, Rockshade muttered. Mind you, Sharpclaw murmured into Leafstar's ear when the two warriors had turned away. They've got a point. When Billy Storm comes back, we should find him some extra tasks. We don't want these kitty warriors getting the idea that they can have an easier time than the full clan cats. Leafstar felt her neck fur begin to bristle as her deputy used the insulting term again, but she forced it to lie flat again. This wasn't the time to start an argument. Sharpclaw paused to give his ear a scratch with one hind paw, then added, if they want to be part of the clan, they'll have to understand that tasks are shared equally. You're right, Leafstar replied. She was grateful for her deputy's support when she knew that he really agreed with Sparrowpelt and Rockshade. Maybe if we get them all involved in organizing the new dens, they'll feel more like staying in the gorge. Sharpclaw gave her a disbelieving look and twitched one ear. Yeah, maybe. Leafstar decided there was nothing to be gained by discussing the problem anymore. Instead, she waved her tail to beckon Rockshade and Bouncefire. And you, Ebony Claw, she meowed. You can come with me instead of Billy Storm. Ebony Claw blinked obviously surprised and pleased to be picked out by her clan leader, and followed Leafstar out of the den with the two young toms. Outside, the snow had almost stopped, only a few stray flakes still drifting down. But the trails were treacherous with snow melt, and the wind still swept across the rocks, nearly strong enough to blow a cat off the cliff. Watch where you're putting your paws, Leafstar warned. She led the way down the trail to the apprentice's den to collect mint paw and sage paw, and was pleased to see Snook paw peering out when she reached the entrance to the cave. He stayed too. Come on, she meowed to the apprentices. We're going to start clearing out the caves farther up the gorge. Great, sage paw shot out past Snook paw and onto the trail, nearly losing his balance when his paws struck a lump of ice. What do you think we'll find in there? Bird bones and dust, his sister replied, emerging more sedately. Mouse brain. Sage Paul raised a paw as if he was about to swipe his sister across the ear, then stopped when he saw that Leafstar had her eye on him. Let's go, Leafstar meowed, before the apprentices could start tussling. It's cold, so we can warm ourselves up with some exploration. 
Once they reached the bottom of the gorge, she picked up the pace until the cats were bounding along, muscles stretching and tails streaming out behind them. Their panting breath made white clouds in the cold air. The new caves were a couple of fox lengths before the training area, now white with a light covering of snow. Looking up, Leafstar spotted four narrow openings, two close to the bottom of the cliff and two others higher up. Ebony Claw approached the nearest gap and stuck her head and shoulders inside. It's really small, she reported, her disappointment obvious even though her voice was muffled. Ebony Claw, come out, Leafstar ordered. The black she-cat backed out of the cave and turned an inquiring look on Leafstar. What did you forget? The clan leader asked. Ebony Claw looked puzzled. She should have listened and sniffed first, Rockshade meowed loudly. Leafstar gave him an annoyed look. He's right, but I shouldn't have given him the chance to embarrass Ebony Claw. I need to be more careful. You never know what might be lurking inside, Leafstar explained. There could be a fox or a badger or even a bee's nest. So you have to watch out when you're going into a confined space. Sorry, Ebony Claw hung her head and scraped one forepaw on the ground in front of her. So why don't you have a look at this other cave and show us how to do it the right way? Leafstar indicated the second lower cave with a flick of her tail. Ebony Claw padded up to the cave and halted a tail length in front of it, opening her jaws to taste the air. After a few heartbeats, she turned to Leafstar. I can't hear or scent anything. There's nothing alive in there. Go and look then. Ebony Claw approached the cave and slid cautiously inside to reappear a moment later. It's empty, Leafstar, but I think it's also too small to be much use. Leafstar took a look in both the lower caves. Ebony Claw was right. They were too cramped to make comfortable dens. They didn't go back far enough, and the roofs were low. Snail trails crisscrossed the stone floors with silver lines, and farther back, leaves and debris were heaped against the walls. We'll clean them out later, she decided. They might do for storage. Outside, Bouncefire was staring up at the other two caves. I can climb up there, he announced. Do you want me to take a look? We'll all take a look, Leafstar replied. Follow me and be careful. There's no proper trail leading up there. The route up to the next cave was a hard scramble. Leafstar had to push herself up using cracks in the rock for paw holds, hauling herself over boulders and edging along narrow ledges. Glancing back, she saw that the other cats were managing to follow. Rockshade grabbed Mintpaw by the scruff and dragged her up a slanting rock when the short-legged apprentice couldn't reach the next crack. If we want to use this cave as a den, we'll have to make a better way of getting to it. But when she reached the entrance to the cave and checked to see if it was safe, Leafstar was encouraged to see that it was much bigger than the two lower ones. Its roof arched at least a tail length above her head. And she couldn't see the back wall, it was so choked with debris. Bouncefire scrambled, panting onto the ledge beside her, and immediately let out a huge sneeze. Dust, he gasped. Right, Leafstar mewed, feeling a spark of amusement at the young cat's surprised look. So let's get on with clearing it out. She started by clawing at an old bird's nest, which instantly came apart in her paws, sending up another cloud of dust and setting her sneezing too. She heard a mrow of laughter from Bouncefire as he set to work beside her. The other cats arrived to help, pulling out twigs and leaves and bones of long dead prey, and sending it all cascading over the lip of the entrance into the gorge below. At last, Leafstar began to get a better idea of how big the cave was. A wide space stretching deep into the cliff, dry and shielded from bad weather. This could be good, she wheezed as she blinked through a haze of dust. Plenty of room, and it will be comfortable once we bring some moss up here. Safe, too, Ebony Claw pointed out. Nothing could sneak up on us. Leafstar gave her an approving nod. She might spend her nights in a two-leg nest, but the black she-cat was smart and thought like a warrior. Maybe we shouldn't try to make an easier trail. It'll be safer to leave it as it is. Let's take a breather, she mewed, sitting where she could look out of the entrance at the climb they had just managed. You've all worked really hard. Her clanmates flopped down around her and began to groom dust and bits of debris out of their pelts. Leafstar? Will you tell us more about the old Sky Clan? Snookpaw asked, sounding unusually shy. 
I've heard the other cats say there was another clan here a long time ago. Is it true? Completely, Leafstar answered, trying to recollect everything that Firestar had told her about the first Sky Clan. She settled herself more comfortably on the sandy floor of the cave. Long ago, the first Sky Clan lived in a forest with four other clans, but they had to leave when Two Legs stole their territory to build a Two Leg place. There are other Two Leg places? Mint Paw gasped, her eyes stretched wide in wonder. Oh, yes, lots of others. Anyway, Sky Clan traveled for a long way, and at last they came to the gorge and made their camp here. They lived in the dens where we live now. The three apprentices glanced at one another, their eyes wide, as if they expected to see the spirits of those long ago cats padding in through the cave entrance. But then the rats came, Leafstar went on. They killed many of the old Sky Clan cats and drove out the rest. Some of the warriors went elsewhere, and some of them became loners or kitty pets. And some, just a few, held on to the memory of Sky Clan until Firestar came and brought it back to life. Sagepaw heaved a long sigh. That's so great. Do you think that we could be descended from those old Sky Clan cats? I wish I was. And me, Rockshade put in. Me too, Mintpaw added, while Snookpaw blinked but said nothing. You might be, Leafstar mewed, though privately she had her doubts. Firestar had told her that the old Sky Clan cats had long legs for jumping and hard pads for walking on rocky surfaces. Mintpaw and Sagepaw didn't have either of those, and neither did Rockshade or Bouncefire. But Snookpaw could be a Sky Clan descendant, she thought. He's good at leaping and fearless when he climbs trees. And Ebony Claw's legs are long and strong. Every cat around here could have links to the old clan, she continued, careful not to single out the Daylight Warriors. Which means that every cat has the right to be our clanmate. I'm a Sky Clan cat, Rockshade announced, crouching down as if he intended to take a flying leap out of the cave. I can jump and climb really well. So can I, Mintpaw chimed in, her eyes gleaming. And my legs are really strong. Leafstar suppressed a sigh. Are they going to start measuring each other's legs now? I'm strong, too, unlike some I could mention, Rockshade growled. He means the daylight warriors, Leafstar realized. Sky Clan cats come from many different places, she reminded the young Black Tom. They should all have a chance to belong here. I guess so, Rockshade mumbled, though Leafstar wasn't sure he really agreed. Ebony Claw and Snookpaw exchanged a glance, but neither of them spoke. Inwardly, Leafstar admitted to doubts of her own. I wish I could be sure how to handle this. I want a clan where every cat will be welcomed and valued for the skills they can bring. Instead, all my warriors seem to be pulling in different directions. When Firestar and Sandstorm left, all the Sky Clan cats had lived in the gorge day and night. Dedicated warriors like the clans in the forest where Firestar lived. He'd had no way of knowing that cats from the two-leg place would want to join Sky Clan on their own terms, spending days in the gorge and nights with their housefolk, well-fed and cozy and safe from foxes. None of Firestar's advice about leading a clan had prepared Leafstar for having clanmates who seemed to be split in two. Can I really hold them together? Chapter 3 Leaf Star opened her eyes to see moonlight slanting in through the entrance to her den. A voice had roused her from sleep, but now all was silent except for the whispering of the river at the bottom of the gorge. She rose to her paws, arched her back in a long stretch, and shook scraps of moss from her pelt. Slipping out of her den, she padded down the trail until she reached the edge of the water. At the foot of the rock pile, the three new warriors were keeping vigil each one sitting upright with their tails curled neatly over their paws. In the moonlight, they looked like cats carved out of ice or stone, and they didn't acknowledge the nod Leafstar gave them as she passed. She headed for the new dens, her paws gliding silently over the white drifts of snow that still lingered in the shade of the rocks. The boulders glistened with frost, as if Leaf Bear had returned to the gorge, but the brown and cream tabby didn't feel cold. Instead, her body felt warm and curiously light, like a leaf spinning idly in a warm breeze. 
Scrambling up the rocky cliff face, Leafstar reached the largest of the new dens and padded inside, shaking the snow melt from each of her paws in turn. I was right, she thought. This will make a good den. It's sheltered from the wind, and it will be hard for enemies to reach the entrance. If they suspect we're in here at all. Your cats will be safe here. Leafstar spun around at the sound of a voice behind her. Another cat stood outlined in the entrance to the cave, black against the silver moonlight. Catching her breath, Leafstar drew in a sweet but unfamiliar scent. Not until the strange cat stepped forward did she recognize the graceful tortoiseshell and white figure of Spotted Leaf. The medicine cat who walks with Star Clan, Firestar's friend. What is she doing here? Spotted Leaf paced forward, her pelt glittering with starlight until she was close enough to brush against Leaf Star's fur. Her scent wreathed around them. Greetings, dear friend, she murmured. Am I, am I dreaming? Leaf Star asked hoarsely. She still wasn't used to dead cats walking into her mind and talking to her as if they were still alive. Spotted Leaf dipped her head. To your clanmates, you are asleep in your den. Didn't you notice how the new warriors didn't even blink when you walked by? Leafstar shrugged. I thought they were obeying the rules of the first night vigil. I don't doubt that they are, Spotted Leaf murmured. She looked around, pricking her ears. Sky Clan must be doing well if you need new dens, she observed. I, we were just exploring, Leafstar explained, wondering what these caves could be used for. We have new kits in the clan and more on the way, but we haven't spilled out of our old dens yet. Spotted Leaf's glowing green eyes searched Leafstar's face. Is all well with your clan? Everything's fine, Leafstar replied carefully. She wasn't going to share her concerns about Billy Storm and the others with this cat who was almost a stranger to her. She isn't part of our clan. How are Firestar and Sandstorm? They're both well, the Star Clan cat replied. They have two kids, little daughters. That's great. Warm pleasure flooded through Leafstar. When you see Firestar, tell him how happy I am for them. I will. To Leafstar's surprise, Spotted Leaf didn't seem as pleased as she would have expected at the thought of Firestar's litter. Once again, she fixed her green gaze on Leafstar. You have the hardest task of any clan leader, she meowed. You must build a clan from cats who know nothing of the warrior code. Leafstar hadn't expected Spotted Leaf to begin discussing her clan, and she wasn't sure she welcomed it. We do know the warrior code. Firestar taught the first of us, and we're teaching the rest. I do my best, she pointed out. And you are doing well, Spotted Leaf told her. But there is a long way to go before your future is secure. Leafstar stiffened. What did Spotted Leaf know that she wasn't sharing? Had she seen the tension among the Sky Clan warriors earlier? She opened her mouth to defend her clanmates, but Spotted Leaf was beckoning her to the cave entrance with a wave of her tail. Looking out, Leafstar saw several unfamiliar cats in the bottom of the gorge. At first, her fur started to bristle at the idea of strangers invading the camp. Then she realized that pale starlight glimmered from the fur of the newcomers, and their bodies were so faint that they were almost transparent. Leafstar could make out the jagged shapes of rocks behind them through their shadowy forms. As she watched, some of the cats padded away in different directions. Three more melted into the shadows of the elder's den, leaving only two behind, sitting together at the entrance of Echo Song's cave. Who are they? Leafstar whispered, icy claws pricking her spine. Spotted Leaf didn't reply. Instead, the voice of the bigger cat, a dark brown tabby tom, floated faintly up from the gorge. Will a clan ever live here again? The other cat, a paler brown tom, dipped his head and murmured something Leafstar couldn't catch. She sensed great sadness clinging to the pelts of both cats, like the scent of rank herbs. Then the smaller cat raised his head, gazing upward as if he spoke directly to Leafstar. This is the leaf bear of my clan. Now his words rang clearly in Leafstar's ears, echoing through the seasons that separated her from the long ago cat. Green leaf will come, but it will bring even greater storms than these. 
Sky Clan will need deeper roots if it is to survive. Is that a warning? Leafstar whispered over her shoulder, trying hard to keep her voice steady. Maybe a prophecy? She remembered her dream of the night before. The uprooted trees and bushes hurled down the gorge by the foaming torrent where her cats were drowning. Was that dream a prophecy too? No answer came from Spotted Leaf, and when Leafstar turned toward her, the cave was empty. Shivering as if she had fallen into icy water, Leafstar looked out at the gorge again. The moon shone down on empty rocks. The shadowy cats had vanished. A heartbeat later, Leafstar opened her eyes to find herself curled up in the mossy nest inside her own den. Watery dawn light seeped in through the entrance. She blinked in confusion. The words of the small brown tom still echoing in her ears. What did he mean by greater storms? And how can cats have deeper roots? Mouse brain, there'll be more prey if we go downstream. No, we should cross the stream and hunt in the forest. You're both wrong. We should climb the cliff and try the trees at the top. There are plenty of squirrels there. Leafstar sighed as the bickering reached her den. She recognized the voices of Tiny Cloud, Rockshade, and Bouncefire. Heaving herself to her paws, she stumbled to the entrance of her den, struggling to tear her mind away from the clinging cobwebs of her dream. When she peered out the entrance, Leafstar spotted the clan's three newest warriors crouched together at the bottom of the rock pile. Bouncefire's voice rose in a wail. If you would just listen! Leafstar headed down the trail to break up the argument. But before she reached them, Sharpclaw appeared, bounding down the rocks from the direction of the warrior's den. Leafstar halted on a boulder at the foot of the cliff and watched her deputy deal with the quarrel. What's going on here? His voice was as rough as a paw full of claws scraping across rock. You're supposed to be keeping vigil, not waking the rest of the camp with your caterwauling. It's dawn, our vigil's over, Rockshade pointed out. And we want to go hunting, Tiny Cloud added. Sharpclaw raked all three of them with an icy glare from eyes like chips of green ice. Funny, I always thought it was the clan deputy who set the patrols. Am I wrong? The young cats hung their heads. No, Sharpclaw, Bouncefire muttered. Good, the clan deputy flicked his tail. Rockshade, you can come with me and do the border patrol on this side of the gorge. Bouncefire, Patchfoot is leading a hunting patrol. Go find him and tell him I said you're to go with him. What about me? Tiny Cloud asked. Cherrytail is leading the other border patrol. You can go with her and make sure that I don't have to talk to you about this kind of squabbling again. Leafstar gave her deputy a nod of approval as he spun around and stalked away. Pleased that she hadn't needed to intervene, she headed along the bottom of the cliff toward the medicine cat's den. From behind her, she overheard Tiny Cloud's voice. At least I can stay away from Echo Song's den today. If she catches me, she'll have me fetching herbs again. Leafstar almost turned back and ordered the white she-cat to do just that, but she didn't want to countermand Sharpclaw's orders. I'll make sure she helps Echo Song again soon, though, she decided. Every cat has to understand how important the medicine cat is to the life of the clan. When Leafstar slipped through the outer cave into Echo Song's inner den, the young medicine cat had her back to her as she bent over the herbs that were stored in cracks at the back. Juniper berries, yarrow, tansy, she murmured to herself. No, that's not tansy, it's colt's foot. Greetings, Echo Song. At the sound of her leader's voice, the silver tabby jumped and whipped around, her green eyes wide. When she saw Leafstar, she relaxed, puffing out her breath. Leafstar, you startled me. Sorry. Leafstar padded forward to touch noses with the medicine cat, enjoying the sweet, crisp scent of herbs that clung to her fur. I'm glad you're here, Echo Song went on. I, I had something that might have been a dream last night. At least, I know it was a dream, but... I'm not sure if it was important. Leafstar felt a tingle beneath her pelt. She'd intended to ask the medicine cat about her dream, too. A coincidence or something more? Tell me what happened, she prompted. Echo Song paced across the outer den and sat down in the entrance, beckoning with her tail for her clan leader to sit beside her. I woke up, or at least I thought I woke up, 
and I heard quiet voices outside my den. When I looked out, I saw two cats. One was a big dark tabby, and the other was smaller and paler brown. Starlight was glimmering in their fur, but they looked so faint and far away. Leafstar's belly clenched. Echo Song was describing the two cats she had seen in her own dream. Did they say anything? She asked warily. Echo Song nodded. The big tabby said, it is time to leave. Our last duty is completed. They started to pad away up the gorge. Then the smaller cat stopped and turned, and I felt as if he was looking straight at me. He said, this is the leaf bear of my clan. Green leaf will come, but it will bring even greater storms than these. Sky clan will need deeper roots if it is to survive. What do you think he meant, Leaf Star? Leaf Star's heart was thumping as if it were about to burst out of her chest. It was a moment before she could reply. I don't know, but it must mean something. Because I had the same dream last night. Echo Song sprang to her paws. The exact dream? Near enough, except I dreamed that I went to the new dens up the gorge, and that's where I saw the two cats. Spotted Leaf was there too. Briefly, Echo Song looked envious. I wish I'd seen her. There's so much I need to ask her about herbs. Maybe Fawn Step will visit you tonight for another training session. After all, she was a Sky Clan medicine cat, Leafstar suggested. She was still a little suspicious of Spotted Leaf's appearance in her dreams. Surely Spotted Leaf's loyalties were to Thunder Clan. Why is she so interested in my clan? Leafstar flicked her tail tip, trying to control her frustration. But right now, we need to figure out what those cats in the gorge were talking about. It, it sounded like a prophecy, didn't it? Yes, it did, Echo Song agreed quietly. The small tabby was warning us, Leafstar murmured, anxiety prickling in her fur as if ants were running through it. He talked about worse things to come for Sky Clan. The young medicine cat shuddered. What could be worse than the rats? And deeper roots, Leafstar went on. Whatever that means. Maybe we should eat roots, Echo Song guessed. Leafstar shook her head. What good would that do? Unless they're a source of medicine that we haven't discovered yet. Besides, I had another dream the night before. Flood water was pouring down the gorge, uprooting everything in its path, flooding into our dens and sweeping us away. I think the two dreams are connected. Echo Song nodded thoughtfully. One of our clanmates might have a better idea about what the dreams meant, she suggested. Should we call a meeting and tell them? Something inside Leafstar flinched away from the thought of confessing to the rest of the clan that the leader and the medicine cat couldn't figure out what their ancestors were trying to tell them. Was Firestar plagued by these kinds of doubts? Maybe she should give Star Clan another chance to explain. No, we won't say anything to the rest of the clan yet, she meowed. Echo Song looked surprised. Leafstar added, not because they're not involved, but because we might get more dreams that make the prophecy clearer. After all, what could we tell them now? That something bad is going to happen? That will only make them panic. Echo Song tilted her head to one side. If that's what you want, Leafstar, she murmured. Leafstar tried not to bristle at the hint of doubt in the medicine cat's tone. It's what is best for the clan, she insisted. And if we have any more visions, we'll discuss them in private until we can figure out what our ancestors are trying to tell us. Chapter Four Leafstar padded up the gorge toward the new caves, enjoying the sensation of sunlight on her fur. A few days had passed since the snowfall, and the weather had turned unexpectedly warm for so early in New Leaf. As she approached the new dens, a twig sailed out into the air from the cliff face and clattered onto the ground by Leafstar's paws. She had to jump aside to avoid it. It's a snake, a voice yelled from above her head. I killed it! Gazing upward, Leafstar spotted two of the daylight warriors, Harvey Moon and MacGyver, on a ledge outside the fourth of the new caves, which so far no cat had cleared out. As she watched, MacGyver scooped up a pawful of dry moss and threw it at Harvey Moon. It hit the white tom in the chest and spattered all over his fur. I'll get you for that, Harvey Moon meowed, leaping on top of MacGyver. For Star Clan's sake, Leafstar thought, annoyed, as she began to scramble up to the ledge. 
Fallow ferns, kits have more sense. The toms sprang apart as Leafstar bounded up the last couple of tail lengths and joined them on the ledge. What do you think you're doing? She growled. I thought you were here to help, not behave like a couple of kits. Before either of them could reply, Sharpclaw emerged from the cave. His dark ginger pelt was clumped and streaked with dust, and his green eyes sparked with irritation. I've had to put up with this all morning, he told Leafstar, turning a furious glare on Harvey Moon and MacGyver. You're being disloyal to your clan when you behave so stupidly. Don't you care about the honor of being a warrior? You haven't done a stroke of work, and you're making it harder for every other cat. It's not like we'll have to sleep in these caves, Harvey Moon pointed out. So why should we have to clear them out? Sharpclaw let out a long hiss of anger, and even MacGyver's eyes widened in shock. Harvey Moon glanced uneasily from one to the other. Leafstar could tell that he hadn't realized how insolent the words sounded until they were out of his mouth. Ebony Claw and her apprentice Frecklepaw had appeared at the mouth of the cave, peering around Sharpclaw, and Leafstar spotted Rockshade and Sparrowpelt in the shadows behind them. She realized that every cat was waiting for her to do something. Behavior like this couldn't be ignored. The fact that it was warriors from Two Leg Place causing the trouble somehow made it much worse. Clan cats don't fool around when their clanmates are working, she told MacGyver and Harvey Moon. And they certainly don't talk like that to the clan deputy or any other cat. Warriors treat one another with respect. She felt as if a stone were lodged in her belly as she added, it's not as if this is the first time. You couldn't be bothered to turn up for the warrior ceremony, and on your last two hunting patrols, you never caught a thing. She took a deep breath and went on. You're both banished from the camp until the next full moon. Perhaps by then you'll have decided whether you really want to be part of Sky Clan. MacGyver and Harvey Moon crouched down as their leader scolded them, their ears flattened. As she pronounced their sentence, they exchanged a shocked glance. We're sorry, Leafstar, MacGyver meowed. We didn't think. Please let us stay. We'll work really hard, Harvey Moon promised. Sharpclaw, I'm sorry I said what I did. I didn't mean it. Sorry catches no prey, Leafstar responded. It's too late for that. But I promised to join Wasp Whisker and Mintpaw on a hunting patrol after Sun High, the White Tom protested. And I was going to help Sagepaw check the elders for fleas, MacGyver put in. Tangle is halfway through telling us a story about a fox, and I really want to hear the end. You should have thought of that sooner, Leafstar meowed. She couldn't weaken now, not with Sharpclaw's stare scorching the fur on her back. We'll welcome you back at the next full moon, if you are ready to behave like proper warriors while you're here. But now you have to go. Harvey Moon opened his jaws to argue again, then seemed to think better of it. Despondently, the two cats scrambled down the cliff face to the bottom of the gorge and headed toward the rock pile with their heads bowed and their tails drooping. Watching them, with Sharpclaw bristling at her side, Leafstar wondered if she was doing the right thing by allowing kitty pets into her clan at all. Could this be the greater storm that the dream cat had warned about? Leafstar shoved the thought away. A couple of flea-brained toms didn't deserve a prophecy all to themselves. But I can't go on ignoring Sharpclaw's doubts about the Daylight Warriors. I have to stand up for my deputy. Before Harvey Moon and MacGyver had gone more than a couple of tail lengths, they met Cherry Tail and Bouncefire bounding around a spur of rock on their way to the new caves. In the still air, their voices floated clearly up to Leaf Star. What's the matter with you two? Cherry Tail asked, halting in front of the dejected toms. You look as if you've lost a squirrel and found a beetle. It's worse than that, Harvey Moon muttered. What then? Bouncefire demanded. We were fooling around, MacGyver admitted. He sounded genuinely ashamed. And then this flea brain, he gave Harvey Moon a shove, was really rude to Sharpclaw. So Leaf Star has banished us from camp until the next full moon. That's terrible, Bouncefire squeaked wide-eyed. It sounds as if you asked for it, Cherry Tail meowed tartly. You must have bees in your brain if you think you can come here and just fool around. Cherry Tail's right. Leafstar jumped as Ebony Claw spoke quietly behind her from the mouth of the cave. It was all their fault. Don't feel bad about it, Leafstar. That's right, Frecklepaw added. She was a leggy, light brown tabby, 
and she looked scared stiff at speaking directly to her clan leader. Leafstar touched her shoulder gently with her tail tip. Thank you, Frecklepaw. More cats pushed their way out onto the ledge to watch the two daylight warriors leave. Billy Storm and Snookpaw joined Ebony Claw and Frecklepaw, with Tiny Cloud just behind, while Shrewtooth crept out last of all. Leafstar blinked in surprise. She hadn't realized how big this cave was. It's a pity they couldn't stay, Tiny Cloud mewed sadly. There won't be as many of us to fill the fresh kill pile. Billy Storm and Snookpaw glanced at each other, murmuring agreement. And there won't be as many mouths to feed, Rockshade pointed out, swiping his sister over the ear with one paw. Besides, how much prey did those two ever bring in? What about enemies? Shrewtooth crouched at the front of the ledge and peered along the gorge. Will there be enough of us to fight them off? Rockshade rolled his eyes. What enemies, mouse brain, there's only us. Leafstar's heart grew heavier as she heard her clanmates arguing. Will this clan ever learn to work together? Thanks for supporting me, Sharpclaw broke in on her thoughts. It was the right decision. I didn't do it for your sake, Leafstar snapped, surprising herself with her sharp tone. This problem isn't over yet. Sharpclaw looked surprised too, his green eyes flashing at her, but he said nothing. Leafstar wondered if she should apologize, but she couldn't think of the right thing to say. Apologizing is all I do these days, when I'm not being baffled by something going on in the clan. Giving her deputy a brusque nod, she headed down into the gorge. At the foot of the cliff, she met Cherry Tail and Bouncefire. Harvey Moon and MacGyver had disappeared. We're looking for Billy Storm and Snookpaw, Bouncefire meowed. We're supposed to be doing a border patrol. They're up in the caves. Leafstar told them. Great, uh, Leafstar, Cherry Tail went on. We spoke to Harvey Moon and MacGyver. Do you still want us to patrol the border, or should we hunt instead? Leafstar remembered the few miserable pieces of prey that had remained on the fresh kill pile when she passed it on her way up the gorge. You'd better hunt, she decided. Border patrols can wait. Right now, it feels as if all Sky Clan's problems are inside its borders not outside. Leaving Cherry Tail yowling for Billy Storm and Snookpaw at the bottom of the cliff, Leafstar headed for the Elder's Den. Just as she reached the end of the trail that led up the cliff face, she met Sagepaw. Can you go to help Sharpclaw with the new caves? She mewed. Some of his cats are going hunting, and there's still a lot of work to do. Sagepaw blinked in disappointment. Sure, Leafstar. But I was just going to check the elders for fleas. You want to check the elders for fleas? Leafstar mewed. Sagepaw gave his chest for a couple of awkward licks. Well, Tangle was telling this really great story. Leafstar let out a soft purr of amusement and gently flicked the apprentice's ear with her tail. There'll be plenty of chances to listen to Tangle, she promised. Now you need to go and help Sharpclaw. Okay. Sagepaw dipped his head and bounded along the gorge toward the new caves. Leafstar watched him go, then padded up the trail that led to the elder's den. Greetings, Lycanfur, Tangle, she meowed as she poked her head inside. Where's that pesky apprentice? Tangle growled without returning her greeting. He was supposed to be sorting out my fleas. The old cat vigorously scratched his rumpled tabby pelt. They're driving me mad. I'll do your fleas, Tangle. Leafstar offered, slipping right inside the den. Sagepaw is busy. Lycanfer raised her head from the nest of moss where she was curled up. Her amber eyes were wide with shock. Do other clan leaders search their elders' pelts for fleas? I didn't know that. The barb in her voice was unmistakable, like a thorn hidden in a bed of moss. Leafstar guessed the old cat thought she was inviting criticism by taking on tasks that were beneath her rank. She bit back a sharp reply. I wouldn't ask any of my cats to do something I'm not prepared to do myself, she responded mildly. And I have no idea what other clan leaders do. But if you want to lie here with fleas in your pelts, I can go away and leave you in peace. I suppose it's all right, Lycanfer admitted grudgingly. Tangle just grunted. Leafstar assumed that was agreement. I bet elders are the same wherever they are. 
What's this I hear about you sending those kitty pets away? Lycanfer asked as Leafstar settled down beside Tangle and started to probe deep into his ragged fur. Leafstar blinked, surprised, even though she knew how fast gossip traveled within the clan. How do you know about that? Petalnose met Harvey Moon and MacGyver on their way out, Tangle explained. And she came to tell us. And the whole clan will know about it by now, Leafstar thought, pouncing on a flea and cracking it between her teeth. I'm not sure I did the right thing, she admitted. There seem to be so many arguments at the moment, and I'm afraid I've just added to them. Tangle twisted his neck to look up at her with bleary amber eyes. Leafstar thought she could make out a trace of wisdom lurking in their depths. Whatever you decide, he rumbled. You have to be strong. The path Sky Clan walks is shadowed, and you're the one leading us along it. Lycanfer snorted. Cats are supposed to be able to see in the dark, and I for one don't want a blind leader. Leafstar tensed at the hostility in the elder's tone. Tangle gave her a nudge. Ignore her, he whispered. She sat on a thistle all night. Leafstar nodded, warmed by the grumpy old cat's support. But how many more of my clanmates think that I'm a blind leader, she wondered. Leaving the elders, she turned her paws in the direction of Echo Song's den. It would be a relief to discuss Harvey Moon and MacGyver with the young medicine cat and ask her advice. She hadn't gone more than a couple of paw steps when she heard a scrabbling sound from above. Grit and scraps of debris pattered down onto the trail. The shriek of a terrified cat echoed through the gorge. Looking up, Leafstar saw Sagepaw dangling from the cliff face above the highest of the new caves, clinging to the rock by the tips of his claws. Help! He screeched, 